Bomb explosions in Damascus kill at least five. Two bombs have struck the Syrian capital Damascus according to state media and opposition activities. A motorcycle bomb in the Rukh al Din area killed at least five members of the security forces, state TV said. Hours after a car bomb struck the district of Maza near the Ministry of Information, it's not clear whether there were any casualties. The blast came as opposition activists said 55 people had been killed in fighting across the country on Friday. Earlier on Friday, the head of the International Red Cross said his talks with President Bashar al-Azad had been positive. Peter Maura said they had focused on the need to reduce barriers to delivering aid and ensure aid workers could gain access to detainees. What we have today is commitments. What we have is a mechanism to implement those commitments, he added. But we will have, of course, to witness whether commitments and mechanisms are producing results. UN worker killed officials said the first bomb targeted people as they left a mosque after Friday prayers in Rukin al Din, a residential area not far from the center of Damascus. But the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that the blast had been aimed at a security patrol. In addition to the five dead, six members of the security forces were wounded, several of them seriously, an UK-based activist group said. The Associated Press said the bomb went off across the street from the mosque and damaged the clinic as well as six cars. U.S. to designate Hakwani Network as terror group. The U.S. is to designate the Pakistani-based militant Hakwani Network as a terrorist organization, subjecting it to sanctions. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said she had sent a report to Congress saying the network met the criteria as a terror group. She said the U.S. would continue diplomatic military intelligence pressure on the network. The U.S. has long described the Hakwani group as a major threat. The network, which has links to Al-Qaeda and Taliban, has carried out a series of high-profile attacks against foreign troops in Afghanistan. The designation will ban companies and individuals in the U.S. from supporting the groups and freeze any U.S. assets it may have. State Department officials said the formal designation would be made in the coming days. Today, I have sent a report to Congress saying that Hakwani Network meets a statutory criteria for Immigration and Nationality Act INA, for designation as a foreign terrorist organization, FTO, said Mrs. Clinton, who is currently attending an APEC Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Vladivostok, Russia. Pakistan is reluctant. We also continue our robust campaign of diplomatic, military and intelligence pressure on the network, demonstrating the United States' resolve to degrade the organization's ability to execute violent attacks. Mrs. Clinton added that she was taking the action in the context of our overall strategy in Afghanistan, following policy laid out by U.S. President Barack Obama when he visited Afghanistan in May. Hostage fears in response to senior commanders of the group told Reuters news agency that the decision has showed the U.S. was not sincere about peace efforts in Afghanistan. They also said the move would bring hardship for U.S. Army Surgeon Broberg Dahl, 25, who has been held prisoner for more than three years. The Hakwanis also hold numerous Western, Pakistan and Afghan hostages as well as kidnapped for ransom victims. The U.S. has been putting pressure on Pakistan to launch a ground offensive in North Waziristan where the Hakwanis are based. Canada closes Iranian embassy and kicks out diplomats. Canada is closing its embassy in Iran and expelling the remaining Iranian diplomats in Canada. Foreign Minister John Baird has said in a statement. The Canadian government cited Iran's support for Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and failure to comply with UN inspectors as a reason for the move. 
Mr. Baird also said that Iran had engaged in racist, anti-Semitic rhetoric and incitement to genocide. Iranian diplomats have been given five days to leave Canada. Canada views the government of Iran as the most significant threat to global peace and security in the world today, said Mr. Baird's statement. He also said that Iran had shown blatant disregard for the protection of diplomatic personnel. Under the circumstances, Canada can no longer maintain a diplomatic presence in Iran, he added. Ottawa also designated Iran as a state sponsor for terrorism and included it among the list of countries subject to travel warnings for Canadian citizens. We'll move on to the business world. U.S. economy creates 96,000 jobs, but figure disappoints. The U.S. economy created 96,000 jobs in August, according to official figures from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. However, the figure was lower than expected and revisions on June and July data mean that 41,000 fewer jobs were created than previously reported. Analysts had expected non-farm payrolls to grow by 125,000 last month. The unemployment rate fell to 8.1 percent as compared to 8.3 percent in July, but only because more people gave up looking for work. Weak growth employment increased in the food services and drinking places, professional and technical services and healthcare during August, the Bureau said. Employment growth has averaged 139,000 a month in 2012, the Bureau said, compared with an average monthly gain of 153,000 in 2011. The percentage of Americans who either have a job or who are looking for one fell to 63.5 percentage, the lowest participation rate since 1981. Welcome to the world of science. Arctic ice melting at amazing speed, scientists find. Scientists in the Arctic are warning that this summer's record-breaking melt is part of an accelerating trend with profound implications. Norwegian researchers report that the sea ice is becoming significantly thinner and more vulnerable. Last month, the annual thaw of the region's floating ice reached the lowest level since satellite monitoring began more than 30 years ago. It's thought that the scale of the decline may even affect Europe's weather. The melt is set to continue for at least another week. The peak is usually reached in mid-September, while temperatures here remain above freezing. And in sports! Italian McLaren's Lewis Hamilton heads Jensen Button. Lewis Hamilton dealt McLaren teammate Jensen Button in second practice for Sunday's Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Hamilton was 0.038 seconds faster than his fellow Briton with Ferrari's Fernando Alonso, the championship leader, a further 0.0206 adrift. Only 0.257 seconds separated the top eight, which did not include the Red Bulls of the Mark Webber and Sebastian Vettel. Webber and Vettel were 11th and 13th, with Vettel admitting there is a lot to go through and learn from. As we told, it has been a day for celebrating the Lord's birthday, Janmashtami. Let's watch through some of the excerpts taken from the streets.
Before we end today's bulletin of news analysis, let's have a recap of the main points. Democratic Convention, Obama lays out election choice. Prince Harry deployed to Afghanistan. Earthquakes shake southwest China's Yunnan. Bomb explosions in Damascus kills at least five. U.S. to designate Hakwani Network as Terra Group. Canada closes Iranian embassy and kicks out diplomats. There we end today's bulletin of news analysis. Be with us in the coming weeks too. Thank you.